Hey, I'm Maddie and I've been living in my converted minivan for a little under a year now and for the longest time I've been saying I want my next big upgrade to the van to be getting a signal booster and a Wi-Fi router so I can get on the internet like you would in a house. And I'm extremely lucky because the nice people at High Boost sent me a signal booster in exchange for this video. First, let's talk about how I set it up and then we'll talk about generally how it's going and all that. Now, the first thing I did was install these three apps. Three kind of seems like a lot, but they're all free. They're all handy. And those three are the ones on the bottom in this screen. First, Signal Supervisor is the one that you actually connect with Bluetooth to your Signal Booster. Um, right here is just having a little trouble loading. Sometimes there are glitches, you know, not a big deal. Wait a few minutes and come back, it'll be fine. You can check how your connection is going. And then in coverage map, this is just one that I found on my own. I'm camping in a national forest right now, so it doesn't have a hexagon because it hasn't been tested, but places like roads and cities have hexagons on them and that's showing you what the service is gonna be like before you get there. So you can use that in planning. Next is speed test. You click go and then it tests how good of service you're getting. This is especially useful when you're setting up where each piece of your signal booster kit is going because for example maybe you need to move all the parts closer, maybe you need to get them on different planes so to speak like higher or lower than others and this is the way you can tell what works best for you so you know you had the best thing possible. And when the test is over, I click test again two or three times just because sometimes the numbers will be really, really far apart and then you need to go back and figure out what's going wrong because that's not an accurate measure. And those are the three apps. And now step two was connecting the signal booster itself to the signal supervisor app. This is what the signal booster itself looks like. There is a whole bunch of wires, as you can see, so you can spread out everything how it needs to go. And then eventually I'm gonna put this these extra cords in like a rubber band or something or tape them together to, to keep them a little neater, but I just set this up a few days ago. And this is what you connect to your phone through the Signal Supervisor app using Bluetooth. You put in the serial number, you know, put in a bunch of information and then this guy's hooked up and you're ready to roll. I set up all the pieces so that I would get the most signal back here. This is where I hang out. You could set it up so that you get it mostly in the driver's seat, like how they did in this picture, which looks like a little more traditional setup. This is what the power supply looks like. It's a DC power supply. Luckily, when I got my electricity done, I have an outlet that's always on, like you'd have in a house. Most cars are just where there's an outlet where this fits, but the power is only supplied when the car is on. And either one you have is fine. I asked the company and they said the Signa booster itself will charge up, so you don't need to worry about having power constantly on. Here's my indoor antenna, also called patch antenna. I point it towards my little sitting area in this little pocket next to my cup holders. All right, now we're out here on the roof of my van. It is sprinkling a little, but that's okay. This was made to stand up to these kind of conditions. Here is my outdoor antenna. I put it right behind this little, I don't know, this thing that looks kind of like a dorsal fin just because of aerodynamics I think that's where it'll work best you can close the door on the cord it doesn't mind so I put it right there next to my solar panel cords and that should be all good as you place the pieces, you're gonna wanna test to make sure you're getting the best setup possible. So I'm pretty sure I have mine set up the best way, but this is what a test looks like. Here's my signal supervisor dashboard. Not totally sure what all this means, but technology doesn't really come easy to me, so I'm learning. And then of course we go over to speed test, test number one, and we get an error message. 
That's the only time that happened, but all the other times seemed pretty normal. If I was testing my setup, I would be moving things around between each test. Right now, I'm just doing this over and over again to get a general idea, kind of a range of how well it is, since they're all slightly different numbers every time I'm testing it. So as you can see from the tests, it's not perfect. There's still a lot of moving parts that I'm trying to figure out, but it, I am really glad I have it in general. The first time I got it working properly, I was at an overlook kind of in the middle of nowhere in New Mexico. And at first, like the basic stuff wasn't even loading. And then when I got it working, I could even watch videos from the internet which was amazing to me. Luckily, HiBoost does have tech support you can call and ask for help. What I've learned is basically just the classic unplug it, wait a few minutes, plug it back in, wait a few minutes, try again. They taught me just little tricks like that that have really helped. So uh, thank you to HiBoost. This is the one I chose. It's specifically designed for a car. Also, best news is that there is a 15% discount you get from just being my subscriber. The discount code is BEER. I got to choose that myself. I was thinking like, if me and the people that watch my channel were in a secret club and we had a clubhouse, what would the secret password be? And I was like, beer. It has to be beer. But anyway, just use the discount code beer and you get 15% off. I would definitely try this if I were you. If you're on the fence and you have the money, you have a little discount now, I would try it if I were you. The second piece to how I use the internet would be a Wi-Fi router, which I don't have specifically. I might get one later, but let me show you what I'm using for now. The name of the product is Sprint Drive, and it just plugs in underneath your steering wheel. I usually get Wi-Fi while the car is on. Rarely I get it when the car is off. It's designed for people commuting, not necessarily people living in their cars, but it is pretty helpful. Plus, they have alerts for if something's wrong with your car. If you remember back in September, I was having some issues, and this is one of the ways I found out about it was through my Sprint Drive. There's also a map that shows you where your car is. For example, if you park it somewhere and you forget all about it, that map will let you find it really easily. Also, if you're lucky enough to have someone out there that's worrying about you, I installed it on my dad's phone. So, for example, if I haven't been able to text for a few days, he can look at the map on his phone and be like, oh, okay, Maddie's van is in a very rural area. She probably just doesn't have any signal. That's the benefit of having Sprint Drive. I'd say it's pretty good. It's not, I don't know if it's my long-term solution, but it's working pretty well right now. If you have any questions about Wi-Fi signal, um, the signal booster I used from High Boost, please let me know. Remember, code is beer, and have a great rest of your day. Bye! Oh! <laughs> download these three apps. And yeah, three kind of seems like a lot, but they're all did something different and they were all useful and they're all free. That is the largest living vehicle I've ever seen. That's as tall as a semi. You do not need that. Well, I mean, to each their own. <laughs>